So chances are, if you've ever built a fixed wing drone, then you probably use something like this. It's a flight controller made by Matek, and it's a flight controller that's specifically designed to be used on fixed wing aircraft. Now for the past few years, Matek has been pretty much the only reputable company making dedicated fixed wing flight controllers. But now Speedybee, a company that usually makes parts for race quads, has decided to give Matek some competition. What they've come up with is this. It's called the F405 Wing APP. And as the name suggests, it's a flight controller designed specifically to be used on fixed wing drones. As you can see, it does arrive disassembled, which at first I thought was a little odd. But actually, if you think about it, this is a good thing because it saves you from having to take it apart to do the initial soldering. It comes packaged with a whole load of accessories. There's a bag of various wires, a bag of hardware that's needed to assemble the flight controller, a bag of pin headers, which you have to solder to the flight controller yourself. And then finally, there's also a second bag of wires. In the box, you also get a manual, which oddly unfolds vertically rather than horizontally. But it's crammed with specs and useful information and also features full colored diagrams and wiring schematics, which is obviously nice to see. As you can see, the flight controller comes in three parts, which are all designed to stack on top of one another. The first part is the PDB or power distribution board. The second part is where the F405 chip is located. And this is basically the brains of the flight controller. And in the third part, this is a comms board, and this is where there's a Wi-Fi antenna and also a Bluetooth antenna. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Putting the whole thing together only takes a couple of minutes. Each board has a special connector on it that plugs into a similar connector on the board that's stacked above. And once the three boards are then joined together, the stack is reinforced with four metal standoffs and some screws. Once assembled, the features of the flight controller then become a bit more apparent. Straight away, you see there's a large cluster of solder pads located at the rear. And this is where you're expected to solder the pin headers that come included in the accessories. These pads are where 11 PWMs can be accessed, which can be used to control either motors or servos. It's also where a receiver can be connected, either via S-Bus or a UART connection. Now on the note of UARTs, this flight controller has six. However, with the exception of the one that I just mentioned, all the rest are accessed via plugs. The same is true for all the other peripheral connections too, whether it be a GPS, a airspeed sensor, a video transmitter, or a camera. Everything with the exception of the motor, servos, and receiver need to be connected to this controller via plugs. Now the reason SpeedyB has opted for this design is because they believe it will minimize on the amount of soldering that's required to get this controller installed in an aircraft. By equipping the controller with multiple plugs and by supplying a generous amount of wires with pre-installed connectors, their hope is that you'll be able to connect up all the necessary peripherals to the flight controller without needing to grab a soldering iron. Now whilst that's a nice idea in theory, I'm not sure whether in practice it will really work out. If for example I was to buy a GPS module today, the chances of the wiring loom having a plug that's compatible with this flight controller would probably be quite slim. Typically the solution there would be to replace the plug with a DuPont connector, as that's how most flick swing flight controllers interface with their peripherals. But with this flight controller that's not going to be an option. Now thankfully SpeedyB has thought of this, and the solution they provided is a series of solder pads that allow you to bypass the plugs if needs be. However, these plugs are kind of small and hard to access though, so this isn't really a great solution. On the note of solder pads though, the power distribution board at the bottom of the stack has nice big ones. You'll easily be able to solder an XT60 lead and the wires for two motors with no problems. It's important to mention this PDB also features a current sensor, so an external one isn't needed. And it also has three becks, each of which is capable of supplying a generous amount of current. One thing you'll notice this flight controller doesn't have is a USB connector, although these days that isn't unusual. Just like modern Matek flight controllers, the USB connector is found on a separate board, which is then connected to the controller via an extension cable. Typically, the reason for doing this is so that you can position the USB port in your aircraft somewhere that's easy to access, whilst the flight controller is buried deep somewhere in the fuselage. SpeedyB though seems to have slightly missed the point on this somewhat, as the extension cable they provided is only a few centimetres long. Upon connecting the flight controller to a computer, you're treated to a brief animated light show. And then, upon connection to iNav, you find the software has been pre-configured with mixer settings for a generic airplane. Now obviously these settings won't be applicable to you if you plan to install this controller in a wing, but I thought it was a nice touch with SpeedyB anyway, as it shows they understand their product and also their customers. Now at this point in the review, you're probably thinking this flight controller looks okay, but it doesn't really seem to be anything special. But that's where you'll be wrong, because this flight controller does actually have a few unique features. For a start, those flashy LEDs we saw a moment ago when connecting USB aren't just there for amusement or decoration. 
There are actually part of a battery voltage checker that's built into this controller, and each LED represents a different power level. The theory is that when plugging a battery into the aircraft, you can quickly glance here to see how charged the battery is. However, in practice, I'm not really convinced many people use this feature, as more often than not, the flight controller is located somewhere in the aircraft where it can easily be seen. The second unique feature of this flight controller is that it has four separate LED ports, and additionally, it also has its own inbuilt LED driver. Now, typically, flight controllers only have one LED port, and lighting patterns are controlled via the configurator software. You also can usually only use one lighting pattern at a time, unless you do some complicated wiring to daisy chain multiple strips together. With this flight controller though, you can control four LED strips at once, each with a different pattern, without the need for complicated wiring nor access to a configurator. Simply by pressing the boot button on the USB board, you're able to cycle through a selection of preset LED patterns, and as you can see, some of these have clearly been programmed with fixed wing aircraft in mind. The third and final feature of this flight controller, which is a little unique, is the fact it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This allows it to connect to a phone or computer wirelessly so that you can make changes to firmware settings without the need for a USB cable. Now, immediately at home, this feature is pretty much just a gimmick and it'd be both quicker and easier to just use a USB cable like normal. But if you ever find yourself in the position where you're at the flying field and for some reason you need to make some crucial firmware changes but you don't have a computer with you, this wireless feature suddenly becomes very useful as it allows you to connect the controller to your phone where you can access a SpeedyB app to make those crucial firmware changes. Now this one feature is to me what makes this flight controller an interesting and noteworthy product. It's something I think a lot of people will generally find useful and it's what sets it apart from many of the current offerings from Maytech. Without the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, this would in all honesty just be a fairly generic fixed wing flight controller. So it's cool to see that SpeedyB have come up with something innovative to help their product stand out from the crowd. So what do I think about this product? Do I think it's good and is it something that you should buy? Well, I have to say that in general, I actually do quite like it. It seems to be really well made, uh, a lot of thought has clearly gone into its design, and as a respectable list of specs and features. There are some things I don't like about it though. As I mentioned before, the USB cable is way too short. I'm not a fan of the plugs, I'd rather the controller just had header pins, like most flight controllers do. And also, one thing I didn't mention previously is that this controller has an SD card slot, but there's apparently no way to actually access it without taking the entire controller apart. On the whole though, it does seem to be a good product, and first impressions are certainly very good. I can't yet say conclusively though that I think it's something you should buy, and that's because, in all honesty, I haven't actually been able to test it in flight. The problem is, at the moment, I don't have an aircraft available to install it in. So what I've done is I've given it to one of my buddies, and he's going to install it in one of his aircraft, and then do some testing for me. Once that's done, I will report back here, and I'll let you know how he got on. they will either be in another video, or I'll post it in a pinned comment on this video. All I can say for sure at the moment though is it certainly looks like a good flight controller and it's made by a respectable company with a history of making good products. So chances are it will end up being very good and has the potential to be a very popular choice. Anyway, I hope you found this quick initial review interesting or useful. If you have, please do give it a like as that keeps the YouTube algorithm happy. And other than that, all I have to say is thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers guys. Bye.